Hi there, my name is Kerry Dupree and behind the camera we have BK and it is a very exciting day today on Valfafondin Private Game Reserve. We've been given the privilege of joining on a rhino intervention. So what's going to happen today is there's a rhino that needs to get some ear notches done in its ear. So we found the rhino first, it's a three-year-old little bull and the aim of it was to ear notch his ears and um, make sure that everyone can identify him and then collect blood and hair for DNA purposes. White rhinos are very sensitive to drugs so we're very careful in monitoring and the amount of drugs that we use. What we use is about 10,000 times more potent than morphine that they use for pain for you and you know it's a dangerous drug. <laughs> so um, if you do touch something by mistake just tell Armstrong and he'll wash your hands immediately and get you sorted and just keep in touch and Armstrong will just coordinate everything. But this one we're not gonna do. No, we'll do this one. You can hold the thing there. And make That's good. DNA is vital in these cases for rhinos so that we can identify first all the individuals and also that we ensure that there's no major inbreeding so that we can get genetic diversity and also in the case that we do have a poaching which um, is always something that we have to have at the back of the mind if they do confiscate the horns or any of the body pieces we can identify exactly which rhino it is and from which game reserve it comes and we call it RODIS the DNA the rhino identification kit system so therefore as I said we collect blood from the ear and we um, collect hair samples and also samples from the horn when we drill holes to put microchips because we microchip the front horn the back horn and we put a microchip in the body as well and this is all part of the national database every single rhino in the country has to and should be done in that manner Fondant Private Game Reserve. We've got a young female cheetah that's down here. She needs to have her collar changed. It was put on quite a few years ago, so obviously, you know, they, as they grow, they need to have these collars changed. Sometimes the batteries also die. So she's gone down. She's just um, kind of lying here. Her vitals are stable. What a special experience to be here with the Valfa Fondant team. Is it hurting? Uh, not really. Did you take it? We wanted to recolor a cheetah with a satellite collar because the satellite part of the collar was going flat. She was quite clever and hiding in the bushes and she gave us a bit of a run around but um, eventually we found her, we put a dart in her. She slept really well, she was pretty zonked and we could do, we gave her some medicine, some antibiotics and some drugs to make her feel better and a better cortisone and an IV drip to maintain her blood pressure and also to keep her safe and um, 
keep her from getting hypothermia because cheetahs are highly susceptible to hypothermia or overheating and they can easily die from that. So we, um, we gave her all the medicines and drips that was necessary for an immobilized wild darter cheetah from a helicopter. And she probably woke up about 15, 20 minutes, she was up and walking again. It was extremely successful. Everyone worked together as a team and I was very happy with everything the way it went. The helicopter pilot Lambert van der Westhuizen flew like a champ as usual and that makes my life easier as well. Very big thanks to Valfa Fonden, a private game reserve, for letting us be a part of this incredible experience. And uh, also a big uh, thanks and taking our hats off to the reserve team for taking such good care of the wildlife here.